started studying music about two weeks ago now for my quest to become musical inside of just one year. In the first week, I started exploring different resources that were out there, blogs and podcasts and books, things that could expose me to the field of music so I could start to understand what was out there, what I needed to learn. Now, in the second week, I started looking at different tools, different educational products that would potentially help me improve the speed at which I could learn music. So in this episode, I'm going to tell you a little bit how, about how I evaluate a educational tool. My background, well, in college I actually studied video game design and a little bit of neuroscience. I had this idea of attempting to improve how we learn by combining the two, by creating educational video game software that could actually improve the efficiency of learning. This meant that I spent a lot of time studying both the interface, how people respond to the software, as well as also the algorithms and different research that has gone into learning. So when I evaluate a tool, I have a few different criteria that I use to attempt to understand, you know, is the tool going to work for me? Is it going to be an effective way for me to learn something new? So the three things that I really look at when I'm evaluating a tool are, is it realistic? Is it strict? And is it fun? And I'm going to break down each one of those three different things, but I'm going to do it by showing you one of the tools that I actually evaluated. This is called the GTAR. If you're looking at it, it looks kind of like an electric guitar. In fact, it is an electric guitar, but it's a very unique electric guitar. You see, it plugs in to your iPhone. It's supposed to go right there. Now, the first thing you'll notice is, fortunately, my iPhone 6 is too big for this slot. It doesn't quite fit. Um, that was an unfortunate, uh, unfortunate fact that I discovered when it was delivered. Their website says iPhone 5 Plus. That sounded like it meant iPhone 6 was compatible. I contacted the, um, contacted the owner of the company, and I, I really like what they're doing. Uh, they're trying to create tools to help people learn music. It sounded right up my alley. You know, this, as somebody who really likes technology and using technology to improve learning, this device seemed like it was going to be something that I loved. It was absolutely targeted at me, someone who loves technology and loves learning new things. So, I did mention that I had an iPhone 6. Well, it seems like there might have been a miscommunication between us, but eventually I did get it working, but I had to buy this extender cable for the GTAR, which then connects it to my iPhone. And here we go. Now the iPhone is connected to the GTAR, but it puts me in this awkward position where, where do I put the iPhone if it's not in that little case? So I've kind of tried leaving it on my leg, which is a little bit awkward. Just kind of like set it here, I guess. Anyway, let's return to the three elements of evaluating if the GTAR is a good educational tool or not. Remember, the first thing for my three items is that the tool should be realistic. So to attempt to determine that, I'm going to put the GTAR into free play mode. Turn it on there, make sure it's all connected and select free play from the menu. Now, we start to strum around. Well, there's some missing notes in there sometimes. If you listen closely, hmm, I'm missing now. Notice how there's only three that played as I strum four. It's kind of odd. It seems to happen somewhat frequently. It's not because I'm not plucking hard enough or anything like that, but the guitar seems to sometimes just miss these notes. You know, that's a little unfortunate, but maybe it's my you know, newness to the device. Maybe I can get around it over time, or maybe there 
this is a more correct way to go about it. Interestingly, the guitar also holds the strings in a way that kind of keeps them very refined. You also note that as I touch things, sometimes it strikes the note, even though I haven't actually plucked the string. Again, it feels a little bit odd, not like a guitar normally performs. I am very new to the guitar, but there are many different things that seem like a normal guitar would do, like muting a string. Well, instead of being muted, when you try to mute the strings of the guitar, it just continues to be held. The note just plays out. So all kind of strange things that don't quite feel like a normal guitar, even to me who knows very, very, very little about playing the guitar. All of that feels a little bit less than realistic. Now, why is it important that something is realistic? One of the key things that educators look for when they are looking at any practice regimen is transfer. Transfer is the scientific word that is used to describe how well the knowledge moves from what you're learning to what you're doing. Is the practice session applicable to the real world? And looking at this, unfortunately I have to say, no, it doesn't look like it is. These very basic missing pieces here don't perform like a normal guitar. So even if the education on the guitar works well, it probably won't transfer to other part, other aspects of musicality, other aspects of playing a real guitar well. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the guitar and strictness. Now strictness is a fundamental part of any learning, not just educational software, but learning in general. The process of learning is the process of making mistakes, noticing the mistake, and correcting the mistake. And each time you do that, you've learned. And each time you will make fewer mistakes. At a very, very basic level, that's what learning is. So as much as strictness is annoying, as much as strictness conjures to mind that image of a teacher correcting your paper or you know putting a, a bad letter grade at the top, it's necessary in order to learn. So any good piece of educational software, any educational tool needs this strictness. Look at that, just hit the note again. Uh, so I'm gonna now put it into a mode that is meant to play a song. So let's see. I'm gonna click the play button up here, and the very first song on the entire guitar is Air on the G String by Bach. So, I'm going to load that song up and hit play. Now, down the iPhone, you can't quite see it, but there are notes coming at me. And the first thing that jumps out at me is that they've actually paused. The notes have paused here, waiting for me to strum them. Okay, so go ahead and hey, oh okay, so it's lit up. I'm supposed to hit this string there. The two kind of match. Oh, I didn't even actually make, mean to hit the string there, but just accepted it. Okay. Oh wait, I didn't actually change the chord there, and I should have. That's weird. Um, keeps waiting for me, but I didn't actually, okay, so this is the right chord. Cool, got it right. I'm gonna take that off, look at this. But you know what, it's, it's, it feels weird, like it's not, it doesn't seem to really be testing me per se. Let's see if this theory is right. Huh. I'm not playing any of the notes that I'm supposed to be playing right now. Guitar is just accepting it. See? No skill required. So unfortunately, it looks like the guitar isn't very strict because I'm racking up points right now and I'm not doing anything right at all. Now, granted, I do believe there are harder modes. There's, this is an easy mode right now and there is definitely a medium and a hard mode that I believe requires more precision. But 
there is no checking going on at all. Like literally no, next to nothing is being checked except did I kind of touch some of the right strings. Here I'm not even plucking. <laughs> and there, I fell off. So as you can see, I'm having a really hard time using this as an educational tool right now. The strictness, the checking just isn't there. there I'm, not, I'm not being forced to proceed. And it doesn't feel like a real guitar. So I, I'm very lacking in confidence that it would transfer over to a real guitar. So that's two of the three things on my checklist. Now let's talk about the last one, fun. This is the balancing aspect. This is what keeps you going as a student. And this is something that a lot of um, game designers tend to focus on, and a lot of educators tend to scoff at, in my opinion. One of my kind of beliefs when it comes to educational software is that we've got these kind of two schools or two camps of education and fun that don't really see eye to eye on how to, how to approach the subject of creating a tool that's going to be a good learning tool. And this has gotten a lot, lot, lot better in the last decade. The strictness of the educational system from years ago has kind of given way to a little bit more of a balanced approach between the strictness and the fun. But ultimately, the more a student sticks with the program, the more a student is willing to practice, the better they are going to get. And if all of these three elements are in harmony, if it's realistic, if it's strict, and it's fun, then the student will progress very quickly. And the reason for this is because the strictness enforces the ability to learn. The realistic element means that it's applicable to the real world, and the fun means that the student will keep trying it. So I've kind of shown you why I think the GTAR doesn't quite live up to its promises there. Now, as an aside, I will say that this device does do other things than just education. For example, it is a MIDI controller. I don't really know what that means, but apparently it's a pretty cool thing that lets you connect it to your computer and um, kind of do different recordings in a different way. Maybe I'll talk about that more later on when it becomes something that I'm interested in, but right now it's just kind of something I'm aware of that the GTAR has the capacity to do, and other reviewers have suggested that it actually excels more as a MIDI controller than as an educational tool. So there's one concession, but as an educational tool, unfortunately I feel that the GTAR really falls short. In the next episode, though, I'm going to talk about the tools that have been working for me. Of course, for those music purists out there, and for those people who have studied the guitar before, don't worry, I'm not forgetting scales or chords or anything like that. I just wanted to approach the topic of choosing an educational tool because I think it's something that really applies across different topics, across different skill learning subjects. You can apply the lessons from this video to not just music or drawing or foreign languages, you can apply them to a whole host of different skills. Think about if the tools that you're using are realistic, strict, and fun. It's a high bar to set. It's very, very difficult to create tools that do all three, but those that do are going to be significantly better than a tool that does not enforce standards on you, or a tool that's not fun to use, or a tool that's nothing like the real world. So there you have it. That's the basic overview of the three key elements to creating a educational tool. Now don't forget to subscribe to my video channel here for the latest updates and weekly progress reports, of course. Or also head over to the blog at lifebyexperimentation.com and keep up to date on all the latest skill 